Before we begin the video, if you haven't yet, come on down and join my Discord server. Link is down in the description. In addition to the normal villains, the ninja have had to face and fight many monsters or creatures, many of which were actually unleashed by other villains. Today we're going to take a look at the top 5 best Ninjago monsters and creatures. Hey guys, welcome back for a brand new top 5 video. This is top 5 monsters and creatures, and with one big exception that you probably could guess, we aren't going to discuss any dragons. But that's about all I have to say, so let's get started. So we're actually going to start off with an honorable mention first, for the still golems from the island. I felt like these guys were a very original idea. Visually, they look great. I love how these guys can separate into individual pieces, but also they can stack on top of each other and function in that way too. I thought they really fit the mysterious vibe of the island, especially in the sense that they don't talk, they just suddenly awaken and attack people. I also like their ability to reflect elemental powers. I feel like it made for a great fight, and I really wish we got to see more of these guys in the island because they are super cool. Fifth place goes to another stone creature, the Colossus or Odie Titan, which was a huge stone giant summoned by Garbada to help him rule Ninjago. As opposed to some other creatures on this list who betray their masters, the Colossus is really just an extension of Garbodon himself. I love how it basically is Garbodon's fist to keep Ninjago in check, and visually it definitely had the benefit of being in Ninjago's best animated seasons, in my opinion, so visually it's probably one of the better looking monsters on this list. Another great thing about this creature is it isn't really alive, it's just a vessel for someone else's power, and this idea is put to use perfectly in episode 92, when Skylar takes control of it. I also really love that we got to see a full season of the Colossus instead of just an episode or two like the other creatures, so they really got to explore several ideas with it. Overall though, the Colossus was a great display of Garbodon's power and a pretty intimidating antagonist. The Preeminent definitely gets creativity points. It is the only monster on this list that isn't a stone giant, a dragon, or a snake. Instead, it's hard to describe what exactly this is. It can best be summed up as a giant blob with a mouth and tentacles, and I feel like its abstract nature definitely makes it pretty horrifying. One of the big reveals is that the Cursed Realm is the preeminent and vice versa, and I think that is something that makes this monster feel more important or significant. It's got cool abilities too, it's able to summon ghosts, and it is able to quickly regrow limbs, and in its mech form when the ghosts create arms and legs for it, it comes off as very terrifying, and it was basically like a moving fortress. There was a lot of mystery leading up to this release about what the preeminent was, and I felt that mystery was handled really well. The preeminent does actually return in season 11's Kaiju Protocol, but see you guys, I don't like that episode at all. We are not going to discuss it. The Great Devourer was Ninjago's first big monster, and it really set the bar high. What is awesome about this creature is the way that it influenced the show, both before we saw it in season 1 and after. This creature is the reason why Garbodon is evil after it bit him, but it also is the reason why the Stone Warriors woke up. It served as the catalyst event for Garbodon getting the Golden Weapons and the first half of Season 2. It is the monster that essentially created Harubi by killing her parents and it laid the eggs that would become the Vermilion Warriors. As for the actual Great Devourer, I think it's pretty terrifying. It's just this massive snake that destroys everything in its path including the person who released it. For a season that had snake villains, I felt the idea of it culminating with a massive real snake felt so appropriate. Again, the reason why The Great Devourer gets third place has to do mostly with the profound impact it had on the show, otherwise it would probably be lower. And in number two, we have the Overlord Dragon. So the Overlord isn't really a monster the way the others are, but I had to include this one. Prior to this creature, we had only ever seen dragons as being good and heroic, but this was the first evil dragon, and visually I love the Overlord Dragon's eyes, its tattered wings, and its fangs. All of these elements really make it feel wicked and truly evil. It also really raised the stakes for the final battle, especially because Lloyd was injured and the Overlord Dragon is this huge creature that can spit out evil with its breath. So again, really raised the stakes. Something that really separates the Overlord Dragon from the other monsters is that it is able to speak which definitely makes scenes with it feel more suspenseful. The Overlord Dragon was the perfect final form for this character in Season 2. It was one that portrayed how powerful he really was, and one that represented his evil really well. And my favorite Ninjago monster is actually the show's most recent, Wajira. Wajira is cool because it isn't just a darkness or evil villain, 
It's actually a water villain. I also think Wajira has the best backstory. It was the original ruler of Ninjago before being defeated and going into a sleep. And aside from the Odi, it is the show's oldest villain, even predating the Overlord. Wajira's powers are the coolest of any Ninjago monster. I love the combination of storm and water. I think it's something that makes this character feel very chaotic. The build up to Wajira was fantastic. The island does a great job of setting her up and confirming her existence. And even the reference to season eight is so cool if you go back and watch it. In terms of design, Wajira is the perfect combination of a dragon, snake, and eel, something that feels very unique. I think Wajira is a better great devourer. The portrayal of this creature as a god and spirit is so cool. And for these reasons, Wajira is my favorite Ninjago monster. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone and everyone you know. Comment below your top five Ninjago monsters and creatures, and I'll see you next time.